If you want to have a natural birth, you do not need to spend $300 on a childbirth class or learn to hypnotize yourself. You already have everything you need to give birth without drugs, whether you plan on birthing in a hospital or at home. I have helped over a thousand women give birth and over the years have developed this simple method for avoiding an epidural. I used it myself when I gave birth to my daughter at home and I will use it again to birth this baby. Welcome back to Every Mom is Midwife. If you're new, my name's Jess. I'm a certified nurse midwife and infertility mom, and I'm currently 32 weeks pregnant. When I gave birth to my daughter, Ingrid, I had nine years of labor support experience under my belt between my work as a labor and delivery nurse and as a midwife. Now that I have 13 years of experience and I've had a natural birth myself, this is the advice that I give to my own patients during prenatal visits when they want an unmedicated or epidural-free birth. I'm going to break this information down into two videos, early labor and active labor. This video will cover early labor, that time when your contractions start and they're still kind of irregular and you're not sure if it's going to progress to active labor yet. If you're planning a home birth, you may have called your midwife, but she's probably not at your house yet. Usually you're less than five to six centimeters dilated at this point if you've had your cervix checked. The catch with early labor, also called latent labor, is that you have no idea how long it's going to last. It could be a few short hours, but a lot of first time moms will go in and out of early labor for days and sometimes even more than a week. Even though the contractions are inconsistent, they're still uncomfortable or even painful. And anyone who tries to tell you otherwise is absolutely trying to sell you something. Because you have no idea how long you're going to be in contraction limbo, the best thing you can do is try and distract yourself and pretend that nothing is happening. I find that if you start timing your contractions and really focusing on them and using your coping mechanisms for active labor during this early stage, you can really wear yourself out. Then by the time active labor actually kicks in, you might feel kind of over it and be more likely to seek pain medication. You could potentially go to work during this time, though I don't recommend driving if you're having contractions with any sort of consistency. Since my contractions were about 20 minutes apart when they started with my daughter, I did go to work that day, but I had my husband drive me there. I had to tap out around 2.45 that afternoon and have my husband come pick me up. At that time, my contractions were about four to nine minutes apart, Still pretty irregular, but I didn't want to have to pause a visit with a patient because I was contracting. This was the time that I turned to my early labor coping list, which is what I want to recommend to you. Make a list of all the things you could potentially do to distract yourself from the fact that it might be baby time, but it's too soon to know. I have a free downloadable PDF in the description that you can use as a template, but a piece of notebook paper would work just fine. Be warned that the things that sound like a good idea when you're not in labor might not sound so good once you are in labor. This is why I recommend making a list so you have multiple options to choose from. For example, my list included going to Subway to get a cold cut Italian sub so it would be waiting for me once I pushed my baby out, but once I was in early labor, getting in the car did not sound like a good idea. I had also included taking my dog for a walk on the list just to keep me moving, but I think we got maybe three minutes from our house before I said, eh, this doesn't feel right, I just wanna go home. If there are some simple things around the house that you want to get done before baby comes, this would be a great time to do them. Maybe you want to do one more load of laundry, vacuum the house, or unload the dishwasher. Activities where it's easy to pause and breathe if you're interrupted by a contraction. I had a midwife friend tell me that she baked a cake in early labor, so that way there would be cake for everyone once her baby was born, and she told me it was the most delicious cake she had ever tasted. I also have a midwife friend who has done a lot of work with the Amish and has told me multiple stories of women baking bread while they were in labor. Again, I had both of these things on my list, did not decide to do them once I was contracting. Sex or self-pleasure during this time can be really helpful, both because if you feel good, you'll feel less pain, but also because if you orgasm, your uterus will contract and it should encourage your labor to progress. Ina Mae Gaskin, the mother of modern midwifery in the United States, loves to say that the energy that gets the baby in helps get the baby out. I routinely recommend her book, Ina Mae Gaskin's Guide to Childbirth, to my patients who want to give birth without an epidural. There are dozens of stories at the beginning of the book told by her patients about how they manage the discomforts of labor without drugs. I do tell my patients to take it with a grain of salt because Ina May is really hard on the hospital system, and a lot of the practices she references were commonplace in the 80s and early 90s, but are not commonplace today. I'll drop an affiliate link for her book in the description. Your list can include anything that is relaxing, but also easy to pause. So things like knitting or crocheting, adult coloring books, or even video games can be good distractions. I cannot tell you how many women I've seen play solitaire on their laptops during early labor or even play card games with their support people. 
You may find that those kinds of activities take too much mental energy in early labor, and that's okay. A lot of women will want to put on a movie to distract themselves, and that's fine too. Once I was home, I found the best distraction was to put on a movie that I'd seen dozens of times so I didn't have to pay super close attention. It was okay if I got a contraction and I had to close my eyes for a moment, and it was also easy to change positions if I became too uncomfortable. I see women use this distraction technique at the hospital all the time, especially the mamas that have to be induced for whatever reason, so they're doing early labor at the hospital. The Office is a really popular show to watch in early labor or Pixar movies, something that's familiar and comforting. Healthcare providers love to try and tell you to get some sleep once your contractions start, and for a lot of us, at least initially, that is just not possible. You're excited that baby is coming, but you're also too uncomfortable to sleep, and that's okay. It can still be helpful to lay down if you're feeling tired, and if early labor goes on long enough, you may get to a point where you can fall asleep. The time that I count as early labor with my daughter, so from 2.45 in the afternoon when I left work until 8.45 the next morning when my midwife came over and checked me and I was 6 centimeters, was 18 hours. I found by the end of that time, I was able to fall asleep in between contractions. For a few hours, I would get four to eight minute increments of sleep, would wake up, moan through a contraction, and then doze off and snore again. By that time, I did start hitting my breaking point. I'd been up for the better part of two nights since I had started contracting irregularly the night before, and I was considering going to the hospital to get a shot of morphine so I could sleep. When I learned that I was six centimeters, I knew that option was off the table, and fortunately, all it really took was my midwife checking my cervix to kick me into active labor. That being said, it still took another 10 hours before my baby was born. I will post a video in the coming weeks about managing prodromal labor, so early labor that goes on for days or even weeks, so make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss that video. Next week, I'll upload a video about coping techniques for active labor, so keep an eye out for that. Similar to early labor, I think making a list for active labor is helpful too. If you download the template in the description, you will also see space for your active labor plan. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up so it can reach as many women as possible. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you.